Okay. We are now uh, recording. Um, my name is Dr. Daniel Farb. I'm the CEO of Flower Turbines. And excuse me, I have a little bit of a sore throat. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about flower turbines, particularly in Canada. And by way of introduction, I believe we have a great company. And I also believe that we are at the intersection of where a number of other companies would like to be. In other words, we have solar companies and battery companies that are working together and they're missing the missing link, which is wind. And I believe that our company uh, is uniquely capable of filling that position and becoming a large global renewable energy company. And uh, I'm going to show you why I believe that. So first of all, we've won a lot of awards. Um, Pepperdine University Business School uh, voted us as one of the 10 most fundable companies in America. Fundable means that it's the kind of company that a venture capital company uh, would uh, like to invest in. Uh, Impel is a branch of the U.S. Department of Energy, and I was chosen as a 2021 innovator. Uh, and we've been chosen by the Solar Impulse Foundation as one of the top 1,000 efficient solutions to combat climate change. Uh, even though it's called Solar Impulse, they uh, are involved in other areas of renewable energy. We also won the Dutch Sustainability Award two years in a row. Uh, we have a big branch in the EU. Uh, and here's the Minister of Climate Change inaugurating one of our uh, charging poles, which combines a wind turbine with solar and a battery for charging e-bikes or your phones. And more recently, we won the Yes San Francisco Clean Tech competition. Um, it's a letter from the mayor's office. Um, and they were try they're trying to recruit some of the best early stage um, uh, clean tech companies in the world to make projects in and maybe even set up shop in San Francisco. So we were a winner of that. And just a couple of weeks ago, we did our first installation in San Francisco. I'll show you what that installation uh, is when we get to it. Okay, so as of now, you probably haven't heard so much about small wind energy as a potential for distributed energy. You've probably heard a lot about solar. So why is that? Well, one thing is that low noise and efficiency usually don't mix. That means that if you want to place something near a house, near a business, etc., on a street, uh, you're going to have noise. If you avoid having noise, it usually isn't efficient. Another problem is that aerodynamically, when turbines are close together, they interfere with each other. Another is the aesthetics. And another is that most of the turbines that you know about are dangerous to birds. So we have solved all of those problems and more because they also start at low speeds and survive high speeds. And we've made it a beautiful design that's easy to zone because it looks like a tulip. And it's, people love watching them. So we've now developed, um, with the funding we've gotten to this point, uh, the patents and the engineering for a whole product line. And um, one is our smallest turbine, one meter high, two meters high, three meters high, five meters high. And our power tower, which has aluminum blades, which can be one to eight meters high. Uh, the power tower has the advantage of being cheaper to produce and cheaper to ship. Now, uh, we have different applications. So here you see a charging station for bicycles uh, combining wind and solar. Here, this is what we did in San Francisco 
its rooftop. You can place solar here on each side. And this is what we call our Echo Roof uh, Energy Hub. And it comes with three turbines spaced exactly the right distance, solar panels, and it has no need for drilling. You don't have to drill into the roof. It's got weights here, it's balanced so that it can stay on the roof very nicely. That was our project in San Francisco, and we hope to do many more of them. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of our other projects, uh, this is a famous one. Um, we're in a Coldplay concert. They take our turbines with them when they tour. Uh, and uh, these are some other locations around the world. Here are our, part, our charging stations, wind and solar combined. No uh, grid connected or just solar and with different types of bike racks. Okay, so let's look a little deeper at some of the technology. The wind is coming from this direction. This is a simulation and it's a cross section of one of our turbines. So you hear you have the two blades. The highest wind speed is red, the lowest is blue. So the wind at a yellow speed is entering the turbine, hitting the first blade, then it travels inside and hits the second blade. Now, if you notice right in here, the it accelerates to red. Uh, I hope you all see that, it's a little small. Uh, what that's telling you is that we have the right efficiency uh, in terms of the way the blades and the shaft are placed so that it actually uh, concentrates the wind and makes it faster in certain parts where it hits the second blade. So we get a little bit of two for the price of one. And that's one of the secrets behind why we've become uh, more efficient than other similar types of vertical axis turbines have been in the past. Now you also see there's some big red areas here. This is the basis for what we call the cluster effect or bouquet effect. In other words, if you were to place another turbine here and another one here, they would uh, collect that higher velocity air that's passing right nearby, and it would be more efficient than if it were just standing alone. And that is, in fact, what we have found. And that's the scientific basis for it. Uh, we have a tremendous number of patents, over 30 patents. Uh, some are aerodynamic, both within the turbine, turbine to turbine, building to turbine, manufacturing, installation. And our next area of a disruptive innovation is electronics. We've gotten over 10 electronics patents in the last year, and that's going to be one of the keys to making our turbines more efficient. And we also have design patents and copyrights. So this is what um, an example of what Warren Buffett, I'm sure you've all heard of him, he's a famous investor, uh, uh, calls a moat. In other words, it's so hard for any other company to copy us because they have to get through so many patents and so many and copyrights and everything else that we are able to have a very solid leading position. And then even if they were to try to find a way to copy one of the other things, they wouldn't be able to manufacture the right way. So uh, we've really uh, got a first class portfolio and we have a strategy, multiple innovations at different levels and uh, establishing a long-term value for the company. Now let's see how some of it works. Uh, this is one of our turbines in a low wind speed area. It's hard to see what it says, so I'll tell you. This is wind speed in meters per second. This is one meter, two meters, excuse me, uh, one, 1.52, 2.53. And this is the power output. Uh, and 
most uh, wind turbines only start turning at three meters per second, which is here. But if you follow this line up, you'll see that we're producing around 30 to 35 watts with this particular turbine at a speed where everybody else is producing zero. And you see that we start below one meter per second. Now there's very little energy below one meter per second, but the point is, is that we have a head start over other uh, companies. So this is uh, one of the things that results from that efficiency I showed you. And there are also other ways in which we made our turbines aerodynamically efficient. Now, the cluster effect. I showed you with putting the turbines together. This is one turbine and how it performs. You put turbo two turbines together, they both produce this much power. Three, each one of them produces four. So by the time you get to four turbines, four turbines put together in the right way are the equivalent of eight turbines separate. This is amazing. This is an incredible uh, uh, key to what we hope to achieve in the wind industry by making projects with more and more turbines and uh, whereby uh, the, uh, the costs come down the more of them that you put into a project and the efficiency goes up. So that's a key to how we expect to go to market. We are looking at uh, not just the old mar market was installing one small wind turbine at a time and it really didn't make much economic sense. We're looking at large buildings, homes with big roofs all around here. This is for the United States, but you'll see it's similar for Canada except uh, proportionately less. Uh, around 30% of the building stock is in windy areas. It might be higher for Canada. Uh, if each project has 10 turbines each, and that's conservative because uh, at shopping centers, factories, etc., we can put 50 to 100. And if you figure what the cost is, if we use the biggest one on the ground, we're talking about a market of getting close to $1 trillion just in the United States, uh, which would be our biggest market in the world. And then of course, North America is gonna be even more. So let's compare it to solar. Uh, we did this comparison uh, in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And uh, of course, Canada is even more extreme because you have less solar, it's higher latitude, and you have generally more wind. So we combined uh, a project of uh, uh, 20 kilowatts solar and our turbines. The space that it takes up is much less than solar. The return on investment is a little bit better than solar. But what's the real killer is that the revenue, the return on investment per square meter is over 700% higher. And what that's telling you is that you get much more out of limited space in the right area, of course. Uh, so we have competition, but our main competition really isn't from other turbines. Nobody can come close, but it's from low grid prices. It's from large wind prices and low solar prices. Here are some of the people in the company. Uh, I've, uh, uh, I have numerous patents. I've won awards for technology. I have three degrees, one in humanities, one in science, one in business. Uh, I've uh, started other clean energy companies, a software company, made corporate sales. Uh, Hani is our head of business development. Um, she has 15 years of corporate experience as an MBA. Uh, Warren has taken a number of companies public, uh, including one to Microsoft. And he's a lawyer by training and has been an entrepreneur. 
uh, himself. Uh, Ali is uh, marketing, and Ika is one of our engineers. We have several engineers. He's uh, an expert in uh, making complex shapes. So uh, we mainly make money from selling the turbines. Our margin is currently around 20%. It's a little bit higher in Europe. Uh, but what we're going to do is start going into other business models, such as selling the electricity instead of the turbines and advertising from making a network of charging stations. And we've already done a beta testing of the advertising and it's working nicely. And we're hoping to make our first implementation of that business model as a test in San Francisco. We already have a location. Again, uh, because we won this prize from San Francisco, we have um, uh, contacts with the mayor's office and other people there that are helping us uh, make projects there. Uh, so here's a history of our funding. Uh, I put a lot of my own money into it to get it started. And then we've had multiple rounds of crowdfunding, which is what we're in the middle of uh, right now. Uh, we've raised a total of $17 million. It sounds like a lot, but when you have a team, you have patents, you're making things, uh, it's more expensive than you might think. Uh, so uh, we've also gotten some smaller grants uh, as well. Uh, our main use of funds is going to be for increasing our operations, uh, marketing, and really, uh, we're at the stage where we can really get our sales going. And But we still have more research and development we could do. So I believe we have a world-changing innovation. And I hope you folks are going to join us. So I'm stopping the share. And uh, I think I will uh, first look and see if there's anything in the chat. I don't see anything in the chat, so please... Unmute yourself, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. While you're thinking of it, I'll just mention that one of the things I enjoy about crowdfunding is that we get an opportunity to meet the people who are investing. And it's really kind of fun uh, because uh, we get regular people, not just venture capitalists. Although we do have some people put in uh, a fair amount of money, but uh, it's very nice. And this is also a way in which we get the word out about ourselves. Uh, and sometimes the people who invest, either them or their families uh, become customers. And we have a special for that right now. But just to give you one example, uh, we were on the line with an architectural firm in Ohio that is working on making uh, a uh, project of 11 turbines on a rooftop with us. And uh, while we we're talking to them and planning the project, uh, one of them said, you know, we first found out about you because my father invested in your company. So it, it shows how... Uh, this kind of an approach also helps us with sales. That's a nice thing. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing some of your questions. I see, oh, there's somebody in the chat. Let's see what's in the chat. Uh, sorry, I missed the beginning. What is the minimum investment? Uh, I think it's $420 US dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how much does a unit cost and how much does it cost to produce one? So as you saw, we have um, many sizes. So um, let me, uh, well, let's just take the two meter size. Uh, well, okay, so let's say, let me say something. It's a little bit complicated because it all depends on production volume. Uh, the three meter one we've looked at extensively because we may be making it 
for a very big project in the Middle East. Uh, we are a sole, we've been vetted as a sole source provider for one of the world's top oil companies in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and we're waiting for the results of a RFP, request for proposal, that they put out for engineering companies to use our turbines in a project. So it may have somewhere between 300 to 1,000 turbines, so we had to get estimates for it. So I can tell you that if we had a single one, a single one, I don't remember exactly, it's something like $10,000 or so, uh to make and if we're making a thousand of them it goes down to around five five thousand so uh, we're obviously at early stage so uh, we sell in the more expensive range uh, but when we start getting into big projects we're going to be able to bring the prices down or when we as we increase our sales but uh, what that means is that, uh, at our stage the cluster effect is even more important because that's how our customers will get a um, good return on investment in a windy area, of course, uh, uh, even if we're still producing at low volume because of this interaction of the different turbines. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, somebody put in 20% margin. It's more or less 20%. Where do you manufacture? By the way, you're welcome to speak up. Uh, so uh, currently, we are manufacturing in both Texas and the EU. Uh, we rent facilities. Uh, and we outsource so that we tend to do more assembly and research and development and testing at our facilities. They're also kind of a showroom as well. So uh, uh, in Europe, we've, we're outsourcing more than we are in the United States. In the United States, we have some more of our own equipment than we do in Europe. Uh, so uh, we're making more things there. Uh, we would very much like to have our own facility, uh, and then we could buy a lot of equipment and really bring the prices down even more. But uh, it means that we've got to have two million at a time uh, in order, two million dollars, not orders, at a time, uh, in order to buy the location. Then we have to buy laser cutters, plasma cutters, benders, welders, all kinds of equipment so it's kind of expensive and we haven't had enough free cash for that yet let's see was the residential size recommended <coughs> excuse me and was required to mount on a shingle roof so uh, we are in the middle of prototyping uh, what you saw of the eco roof except made for a slanted roof so uh, it, we're making it with rubber tips so it can be put on shingles. We're going to test it first just to make sure. <clears throat> but uh, uh, we're hoping that would work. Uh, there's no other way you could put wind and solar on a shingle roof without you know, disrupting some of the shingles and, and drilling holes in. So that's the whole value of our uh, drill, drill-less, bolt-less, uh, invention uh, for, for rooftops. So uh, we have made them so that they hold the smallest size. Uh, we haven't tested the bigger, the next biggest size, two meter yet. The two meter is a lot heavier. So uh, uh, we don't think that's going to work with most roofs unless it's like a commercial concrete roof. So I would go for the wind and solar on the slanted roof if it's a home and putting some of the next largest size on the ground nearby. I think that would be the best way to go. Uh, 
I love your tech and want to invest by purchasing one or more smallish tulips for my home in Massachusetts and interacted with your staff. Uh, it appeared that you were not really looking to market to individual households, by, for example, minimum purchase, little installation support, et cetera. Did I get that right? So not exactly. Let me explain. We get a lot of people that say, can I buy one small one? If you're going to connect into your grid, it's not worth it because the, um, the, the inverter, which is what you need to connect into the grid, the smallest size that we can find that's UL certified in the United States is for five kilowatts. And that means, and it also consumes a lot of energy to operate. So that means that if we were to connect your single small turbine to the grid, you would be losing energy rather than gaining energy. So that's why maybe they discouraged you from that. Now, you can use single turbines off-grid for battery charging. Uh, and again, we recommend at least getting uh, a package of five of them. But uh, you could get one, and in high winds, you're going to get some decent battery charging. Uh, so uh, we are looking for individual households, but what we're looking to do is put maybe 10 of the wind turbines plus a bunch of solar on the rooftop and maybe combine it with some uh, on the ground as well. Uh, and that's the whole point, but you really gain from the cluster effect. We're, we're changing the business model from selling one small turbine at a time to selling multiple ones because now we can place them close together. So uh, th that's why the support people may have discouraged you. And um, uh, that's from Ken. Ken, can you speak up and tell me if that makes sense to you? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Yeah, that does make sense. Uh, I actually was looking to try to come up with at least five kilowatts because of the inverter issue. I have rooftop solar on my house already. Uh, I have about five and a half kilowatts now with uh, with two inverters. So I was looking to tie into that uh, existing, um, uh, you know, on-grid system. And um, it just, it, it didn't seem like it was going to be a straightforward installation. Well, it's but what you did say what, made what sense. What inverter do you have? Sorry? What inverter do you have? Uh, a solar, it was solar edge inverters. Okay, two, so I think solar two edge will not Maybe. work with wind turbines. So yeah. we, just, we would have to get a separate inverter for you. So the way to make it cost effective would either be to get our very large size, which would be five kilowatts, uh, or to get a couple of our three meter size, each of which would be one kilowatt. And then we could use a five kilowatt inverter uh, that is made for wind. We actually use one that's made for both wind and solar. Gotcha. Well, thank you for that. I won't take up more of your time. Uh, I'll try to reach back out to your staff. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, let me look at the next one. Uh, uh, my apologies, I got pulled away during the presentation. What's your ideal target market? Our ideal target market is any place that has a lot of real estate. It could be the side of a road for 100 miles. Uh, it could be uh, a port. It could be a uh, mall a shopping center, whether on the roof or on the ground. So uh, the the bigger, the better, really. That's our I, ideal, uh, uh, ideal customer is commercial or government and uh, airports, for example, uh, where there's room to put a lot at one time and you get a really strong cluster effect. Uh, will you be able to provide the slides presented? Uh, yes, uh, I'm recording it. 
and we will put it up on the internet and post the link uh, after afterwards. Uh, are there safety concerns related to ground mounted uh, turbines? For example, curiosity of children. So we recommend you put a chain link fence so the wind can get through around it, but um, you um, definitely need to protect. Now it's safer than other turbines. I'm not recommending you try to touch it while it's moving, but it's safer because there's a rounded portion that is the leading edge. In other words, there's nothing sharp that's leading. So it could have impact if it's really a strong wind, but uh, it's still going to be smooth. And also, in general, they rotate slower than the kind that are horizontal axis and go like this. So it's safer in that sense. And also for that reason, they don't throw off uh, ice in the winter. Uh, the way that sometimes the horizontal axis ones do. So it's intrinsically a bit safer, but it still should be placed in a non-accessible area. Um, let's see. There's something that could be put on top of apartment buildings and cities. Um, absolutely. Um, it says, for example, say 100. So, excuse me, I just need a throat drop because uh, I've a little sore throat. So, uh, we just did a project of 30 turbines on a rooftop in the United States. So, uh, 100 is great. Yeah, it all depends on the strength of the roof. Uh, and the direction of wind and um, if the wind is enough to justify it. Uh, have any studies been done on the environmental impact of these turbines on birds or bears? So um, we're relying, first of all, uh, on the fact, which is well known, that if birds can see it, and it looks solid to them, they're going to avoid it. But we also have on our website, you can look for it, uh, it might be under our videos or resources. Um, it shows um, a turbine with the birds circling around, avoiding it, and then sitting down and enjoying the view. So, uh, that's our evidence. We've had zero bird kills. Uh, it makes sense that birds should be able to see it. Uh, that's all the chat questions. Feel free to speak up if you have any more questions. Okay. Well, then uh, I'm going to uh, stop the recording.